Hello and welcome everybody again to Autonomous Navigation for Flying Robots. In this video we will look at motors that are typically used on quadruders and suitable motor controllers that generate the signals to make the motor spin at a particular rate. Um, a very simple motor is the so-called DC motor. Um, it just consists of two things, namely um, a stationary magnet on the outside and then an electromagnet uh, on the axis um, that, yeah, that, that is able to spin. And uh, the electromagnet, uh, uh, when it's switched on, induces um, a magnetic field and that in turn induces a torque on the axis. And um, this makes the, uh, the axis spin um, to align the, uh, uh, the magnetic field of the electromagnet with the uh, permanent magnet on the outside. But then this motion comes to a rest uh, uh, as soon as the magnetic fields are aligned. And um, uh, then when this happens, um, typically a split ring um, changes the direction of the, the current uh, such that the motion of the motor continues. And um, this, the principle is very simple, which, which um, means that you can easily build one yourself. Maybe you already built one at school, um, uh, as, seen, uh, as visualized here in the, the, the middle image. Um, and um, also the advantage of DC motors is that you can make them super small um, so that they are really suited well for nano quadrotors um, like the, the bit craze, uh, crazy flea you're uh, depicted on the right. To control the speed of a DC motor, um, you um, have to adjust the power. Uh, so if you, if you give more voltage to the motor, then it will start uh, spinning quicker, uh, faster. And if you reduce the voltage, uh, then the rotation will slow down. But the problem, of course, is that uh, we have a microcontroller or a computer that um, specifies from which we want to specify the, the motor speed. Uh, so the question is, how can we actually modulate the power using a digital signal? And then a very common approach that is implemented in hardware in most microcontrollers um, is the so-called pulse width modulation, um, also abbreviated as PWM. And there the idea is that you have um, uh, a digital signal that you switch on and off very quickly and um, uh, with a certain um, uh, frequency, at a certain frequency, um, and then the amount of um, uh, time that the signal is switched on during this period is called the duty cycle. And the larger this duty cycle is with respect to the period, the full period, um, the more power uh, you actually um, uh, transmit. And um, uh, so, for example, if the, the duty cycle is zero, then there is no, um, then, then you do not power at all the motor. And uh, if the duty cycle is um, uh, during the whole period, then you would power it at, 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 at full speed. And um, you, you can continuously, smoothly change this duty cycle and in this way regulate the, the speed or the output power of, for the motor. Um, of course, this digital signal then uh, needs to be amplified using a MOSFET, um, for example, to actually generate the high current that you need for powering uh, the motors. An alternative to DC motors are the so-called brushless motors. There you have the electromagnets on the outside and they are stationary. And then you have um, permanent magnets on the axis. And this axis can then either be mounted, can, can either be in between the coils or it can be outside around, around the coils. Um, uh, yeah. And you need at least three coils for building a brushless motor, uh, but most brushless motors used in practice actually have, have much more, as you can see here in the images. The advantage of a brushless motor is that you don't have brushes, you don't need the split ring to reverse the current, and that means that the motors um, need less maintenance, you never need to replace the brushes, uh, there is less mechanics, um, and also the efficiency is much higher um, uh, because you can regulate better um, uh, the, the power that you give to the electromagnets. A brushless controller is a little bit more complicated than a controller for a DC motor. You need some electronics. Uh, but, but before we go into the details, let's first have a look at the wiring scheme of such a brushless motor, it's shown here on the bottom left. Um, typically, the three coils that you have are uh, connected uh, to, to three poles, A, B, and C. And then the other side of the coil is um, is soldered together between all coils. And then uh, you're setting a certain current between, um, between two coils, for example, between A and B or between B and C. And um, uh, you're um, um, uh, setting um, 
um, an AC uh, signal there. Uh, and uh, the signal between pair, these pairs of coils is shifted by 120 degrees and that induces um, a rotary magnetic field then on, on the coils and that will make uh, the axis of the brushless motor spin then at the speed of um, um, or at the frequency of these uh, three, three signals. And so you need to um, have a, a microcontroller that, that generates, that is able to generate such uh, phases um, at, the, at the desired speed and for that you typically need a microcontroller that uh, then outputs a PWM signal again for the three motor phases. Um, now in this case it's um, yeah, again possible then to convert this PWM signal using an AC converter to just consisting of a capacitor and a MOSFET chip to improve the power output because the microcontroller can't power directly the, the motor, of course, or the, the electromagnets. Um, so you run that through an AC converter and that gives you then an analog output and that are the three phases then uh, for the motor. And you can buy such um, uh, motor controllers very cheaply. Uh, here in this picture in the, in the middle you can see such a controller. It, um, it's very small. Um, it uh, gets the power from the battery with the two thick uh, red and black cables. Um, and uh, it then outputs uh, the, uh, the three motor phases on the left. And uh, for actually um, reading in the signal, um, uh, yeah, you have this, this small thin cable that goes then to the, to the autopilot board of the quadruple. And uh, to measure the... So, so one interesting thing is that uh, you can uh, actually measure uh, the position and the speed of the motor by evaluating the, um, the electromagnetic uh, response on the three motor phases and in this way your motor controller can tell you whether the motor got stuck or whether it's rotating at the right speed and of course you can also use that to uh, achieve the exactly the exact um, uh, exactly desired um, rotation speed. So to communicate uh, with the autopilot board you could again use the PWM signal um, but it's even more efficient uh, because you have a a microcontroller at the for the for the motor controller, and you have uh, a PC or again a microcontroller for the autopilot. So it, uh, a digital pro protocol is is more efficient. And then one protocol that's used a lot is the I square C protocol, um, which is just a, a serial connection, um, uh, a parallel bus. Um, the cool thing is you can connect all motors then to the same uh, I, uh, I square C bus. Um, uh, the individual um, slaves are addressed um, yeah, using, using an address and you can uh, transmit at um, really high speeds um, uh, then. And, you, and this is typically used, as I said, uh, to, con to communicate the motor speed um, from the autopilot board to the motor controller and the actual motor speed or the actual motor properties um, uh, read out um, yeah, send back to the to the autopilot. And um, just to fill that in with a uh, nice example, this is now uh, from taken from the Parrot AR drone, but you can find similar constructions on uh, other quadrotors as well. Uh, this is the, the motor board or the motor uh, component of the AR drone. Um, it consists of the brushless motor, of course, on the inside. The motor has three cables coming out of it for the three motor phases. Uh, and these phases are driven by the AC converters. Uh, those are the, the three chips here on the right. And then there is a small AVR CPU um, this for the microcontroller that uh, generates uh, the PWM signal for the AC converters. And um, then uh, the, the motors, motors is, not, is not driving uh, the propeller directly on the AR drone, but there is a small um, ear in between um, other quadrotors uh, directly drive the, the propellers. Um, so this depends a little bit on the uh, speed and the power of the motor that you're, you're building into it. Good. So to summarize uh, the lesson learned uh, today in this video, we've looked at DC motors that are used on some quadrotors and brushless motors that are typically used on, on larger quadrotors. Uh, we've looked at the corresponding motor controllers and um, we've looked at the uh, AR drone um, uh, implementation of the motor controllers. And um, yeah, and in the next video we will look at um, methods uh, for generating suitable control signals because um, now the question is what motor speed do we actually want for each of the four motors. 
um, and uh, even at a higher level, what attitude do we want and what um, um, velocities do we want of the whole quadrupling.